Hi, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. We're here with Dr. Megan Nyer. Megan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Megan is the owner of Nyer Performance Strategies. She's an Olympian, a world champion, 15-time national champion, eight-time NCAA champion, winning a diver in the NCAA, and a PhD specializing in performance and health psychology. And she also holds a seat in our international consortium of experts at our MindWorks Roundtable. Wow, she works with individuals, teams, and organizational performance. She's absolutely phenomenal. Megan, thank you again. Um, we're gonna be talking today about the toolkit, the mental toolkit. So let's talk really quickly, a little story that we all know about the three little pigs. And we wanna define what, when we're looking at, at building the mental bricks that make somebody so solid and the emotional bricks that make them so solid while they're performing, can we define what the difference between straw, sticks, and bricks are here? Absolutely. Well, um, you know, the straw and the sticks may be uh, people not having the knowledge or having the wrong knowledge. The bricks are the people have that, you know, coaches or leaders have the um, have the skills and the knowledge in order to impart on their uh, athletes or their students or their employees in order to perform at their best. And they've got to pour these tools in, right? They're going to have to pour these tools in. If they're a coach, they're going to have to pour it into their athletes. If they're a teacher, they got to pour it into their students. If they're in the military, they got to pour it into the soldiers. And if they're in the business, they got to pour it into their employees, right? So they've got, everybody's got to pour these in, right? And when we look at this, my dad always taught me something years ago, and he was really specific on this. He says, John, do it once and do it right. And so if you're pouring in one of the houses of sticks, you're pouring in the wrong information, you can be very inefficient and ineffective. And sometimes you can be effective in the wrong way, if I'm correct. Absolutely. Um, so there's a difference between efficiency and effectiveness, right? Um, efficient is getting it done quickly. Effective is getting it done well. And we want to be efficient and effective because one without the other doesn't necessarily get the results. I mean, you can beat people into good performance for a short period of time, but over time, if that's the only tool, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If that's the only tool you use, uh, eventually you're gonna be ineffective and, um, and not get the results that you want. Right, because you're only hitting, right? And you really don't have enough to be able to, to use in different circumstances and things like that. I talk to a lot of coaches um, and, and they'll say that with their athletes, oh, uh, you know, I'll ask them, do you do mental work with your athletes? Absolutely. They'll agree that the mental work is by far more important than the, the physical work even and, and their training and things like this. The mental, right, it's 90% mental. You hear this all the time from them. And I said, then what tools do you have to use to train your athletes and your performers? Oh, well, we start off with goal setting. So great. That's a really important factor to have goals and, and, and to define them. And then we tell them, we, you can do it. They give them a pep talk. That's all exciting. And I said, what do you do after that? Are there any more tools, Megan? Uh, well, absolutely. There's literally a, a whole uh, war chest, if you will, of tools. Because again, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You got to have, you got to have a screwdriver and a wrench and and um, uh, plaster, and you've got to have all sorts of tools in order to effectively build the house that can withstand uh, the pressure. Right. So, so a hammer, if you're, you're slamming it against a piece of wood and you actually needed a saw, that probably wouldn't come out too, <laughs> too nicely. Right. So no. <laughs> if all you have is a hammer, you can't build a house very easily. You're going to, I mean, you could maybe put it together, but it's not going to be a great house. And what we're trying to build is, you know, the, 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 the people that, that are really trying to perform well at what they do, right. And get really good and, and, and blossom in their work really need a stronger toolkit. And when they come to work with you, what's it that you do for that toolkit? 
Well, again, um, part of that is assessment and understanding what they have and what they don't have or don't know and aren't able to do. They may know it, but not be able to do it. They may have the knowledge and not the skill. So part of it, of course, is assessing where you're at, what you know, what you're able to do, and if you're able to do it effectively, if you can do it, are you doing it effectively? So um, obviously, uh, figuring out what that person or what that team needs in order to take it to the next level is a critical part of it. Um, so the evaluation and and then um, and then imparting the skills and the knowledge and uh, giving them the opportunity to practice that and getting into feedback loops. So um, a lot of people will practice something once and say, "Well, I got it." Well, that's not necessarily true. That's like saying, "I'm going to go to one swim practice and I'll be an Olympic athlete." Right. So works it's it, it's um and it's and it's also um being willing to learn and gain new knowledge and skill along the way we can kind of get our heels dug in and not be willing to be adaptive or resilient or willing to change our mind and and try something new i think um but part of what makes people excellent is they're willing to look at what they have look at what's working um I'm an optimizer. Is there a way to make something better? I dived for 14 years. And even when I did my last dive and my last competition, I came up going, hmm, wonder how I could have made that better. And so it's it's also um, reflecting and reviewing on what you do well and what you can do better. And we say, if you don't know it, you can't build it. And Correct. if you don't build it, you can't use it. And when we're talking about building it, that means that you don't just, like you said, do it once and you have it. It's building it. It takes time to build it. It takes repetition to build it. But it's not just repetition. It's making sure you learn new things and you integrate it into what you're doing. So that's right. a very important aspect. Now, you can visit um, Megan's uh, landing page. You can work directly with her, whether you're a team, an organization, or one-on-one -on -one at our FM Fast Track under our FM experts. Also, you can uh, see her also on our MindWorks. Go to discovermindworks.com and you can connect with her there. Thanks so much, Megan. Thank you, John.